I'm here today with Dr. Amanda Jogg, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the virtual reality research that he is currently doing at Lawson Health Research Institute. Thank you so much for being here today. Can you tell me a little bit more about your research? Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in terms of uh, a new form of potential rehabilitation that we're developing uh, in the uh, modern technological world that uh, we now live in. So currently, rehabilitation that's provided for patients with many disorders, including my subspecialty, which is neurodegenerative disorders and Parkinson's disease, uh, is involved uh, in a very sort of simplistic way, uh, useful but simplistic, uh, that is fairly general in terms of giving patients um, strength training, um, making them less stiff, etc. But the problem is, especially in diseases such as Parkinson's disease, the difficulties that arise are related to uh, performing activities of daily living and function that uh, we are unable to train uh, patients in, in the routine rehabilitation world. Uh, there are, for example, uh, well-established protocols in occupational therapy to take patients to a, a real kitchen in the hospital and see how they perform over there. And that model is very useful because you get to see exactly what patients do. But unfortunately, as one can imagine, these kinds of real-world environments are limited by the physical uh, necessity of having a real world. Uh, if I want to see how you walk around in your living room, I need to have a living room. I need to have a kitchen. I need to have a grocery store. I need to have uh, a road as to how you cross uh, a street or uh, perform in a conversation while playing bingo. I mean, how, how do you simulate or have in reality all of these environments uh, that I can touch and feel in reality? Well, it's extremely difficult. In fact, the construct of having virtual systems in terms of performing tasks is already in our homes in a very primitive way, I suppose, one could say, such as the uh, Wii program or the Connect system, those kind of things. The problem with that is that uh, patients are observing or watching a scenario on a screen and they are performing a task like this, which is uh, not real, they're not really doing anything. To move this kind of technology forward and bring real-world scenarios, either, as I said, you can create the real-world scenarios in your laboratory, go to patients' own home environments, all of which are extremely difficult to do, or you bring the environment uh, in the virtual world uh, into the laboratory. And that's actually what we've done. What we've done is, it's at a pilot level, uh, but it's qu actually quite nice to be able to use uh, off-the-shelf, cheap, um, but not cheap in terms of quality, um, visor-based programs, uh, which we're developing so that patients can actually put on visors on their uh, eyes and then be in a scenario which we can change almost at a drop of a hat, sort of. Uh, if you pre-write them, you can just simply select one and now you're in a different environment. So we could be sitting in my office, uh, in the virtual office, uh, and you would go to the computer and say, select um, your home and we could be sitting in your home, or my basement, or somewhere else. This kind of technology now allows you to mold, modify, and basically have a, an infinite number of possibilities as long as you can program the scenarios. But this program is not simply all virtual, it is called augmented immersion VR, which means that it has real objects. So we have real shelves uh, in the middle of artificial shelves, uh, virtual shelves, where there's a set of real cereal boxes in a grocery aisle. So you can walk up to the cereal box that looks like a box of Cheerios. And you can pick it up, put it in your real basket, which you can carry with you, uh, unlike a lot of the simplistic virtual reality programs where you're just waving your arms around. And that, that's no good. So here, patients are walking around in a, in a room in a grocery aisle. They can pick up a real package of meat, but all the other packages are virtual. So these, are, and we can put obstacles in the middle, we can have noise, we can do anything you want. So that's what we've done. We've created real-world scenarios in an interactive virtual environment uh, so that patients can perform tasks in them. So interesting. So can you tell me a little bit more about um, what you're hoping to accomplish through the research? Right. So there are two aspects to this work. Uh, 
I'm a scientist, so uh, a big interest is understanding the science. Now, since very little data actually exists in terms of how patients perform in, the, in a virtual environment, first set of scientific data that we would collect would be based on interaction of us, including us, in a virtual environment. It is somewhat disorienting to start with because uh, things are not as you might perceive in the real world. Um, and so that part of how this technology can be used is a, is a research question in itself. Second, uh, the computer science and my collaborator, Dr. Kachbaugh from the university and his team are learning how to use the latest uh, but off-the-shelf cheap technology uh, and write all the software to be able to make this happen. So from their end, uh, from a computer science and graphics perspective, there is research into, the, into all of the tools that are necessary. <clears throat> but finally, um, I mean, and thirdly, from a neuroscience end, I'm a neuroscientist, I'm interested in how the brain solves this problem that we have of being able to you know, do motion in the real world. Um, so that there's a neuroscience question. All of those are science-based questions. But then there's also a product potentially here. I mean, that's why we've tried to keep all of the uh, infrastructure that we're developing in such a way that we'd be able to put something together that you could, in reality, in a few years' time, see, uh, 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 you know, on a shelf at Walmart, uh, where, or at a, maybe a rehab store. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us a little bit more of your research today. No problem. You're most welcome. I'm Andy Jelena, bringing you inside LHSC.